Hello everyone and thank you for joining us in this tutorial where we are gonna explore the lighting techniques inside Unreal Engine 5 using Lumen and also Lumen Plus Ray Trace. So let's get started. So after launching Unreal Engine 5 and choosing from the architectural project browser a blank project where we're gonna have hardware ray tracing and Lumen enabled by default, we're gonna create an empty level and import our datasmith file that we have created earlier inside Blender. So after importing our datasmith file, now it's time to add a light source to our scene. Now we can add any of the lighting actors that we have here, but because this is an ArcVis project, we'd like to add a skybox with an HDRI that will help visualize the project and its location, if it's available, and also illuminate the scene with the same HDRI. So I'm gonna type, while choosing the content folder, a blueprint light studio and if you remember we used to use this in early release of Unreal Engine 5 and it causes the uh, project to crash but now it is stable and can be used without any issues so I'm gonna activate the use HDRI and disable the sunlight because we want to add a directional sun separately and also remo remove these arrows from scene so I'm gonna move to the lit mode and immediately we'll start to see the HDRI affecting our uh, project here. But I'm gonna change that HDRI with another one that I have downloaded earlier. And I have increased also the maximum texture to 4096 resolution. And then I'm gonna assign it to the cube map of that HDRI. and inside the skybox as well and make sure because we're gonna use a dynamic light we're gonna set the light to be movable now what we are seeing right now is basically the scene is lit only by lumen without any hardware ray tracing and to confirm that we're gonna go to the project settings and we'll find that the use hardware ray tracing when available is disabled so there is no hardware ray tracing currently inside our scene. The scene is lit by Lumen and this is where we're gonna start to understand how does Lumen eliminate the scene. Lumen uses software ray tracing which is less costly than the hardware ray tracing and much faster. The process starts by casting rays from the camera that is looking into our scene at the objects that are available into the scene and once these rays reaches these object it will create a sign distance field which represent the distance from the camera to these objects once lumen gather all of the information it will start to build a global distance field and a mesh distance field the difference between them is that global distance field is useful for objects that are far away from the camera it's less costly and it is fast, but it doesn't actually work well for Arc Interiors project that have lots of details. That's why Lumen start to create a mesh distance field for closer objects, which can be actually determined by two meters away from the cameras. We can visualize the difference to see the quality wise between them. So global distance field is a visualization of the objects but with less details. However, the mesh distance field visualize our scene with more details, which can help Lumen build up more accurate data to let the scene. In your project settings, you can determine which tracing method you would like to use. If your scene is Full of details and you require more tracing details then then it's better to keep the detail tracing where we where you're gonna have both of them the global and the mesh distance field but if your project is basically just a visualization for um, a landscape or an urban design you can basically use the global tracing because you don't need that much of details once Lumen gather and analyze the data it will start to create a surface cache that will help eliminate the scene. 
So how does the surface cache work basically? If we visualize it in our scene, we can see clearly that there is a pink color and also low resolution presentation of our scene. So before we go further to explain this, let's have a quick and simple example to understand how the surface cache is being calculated. So here is a simple example that represent three different ways of modeling walls inside Blender. This is a single mesh with no thickness. The second one is the same with thickness to the wall. And the third one represent separate walls modeled or separated after the model have been finished. Now we're gonna export this and import it and import them inside Unreal Engine using DataSmith. And once they are important with a skylight added to the scene, we need to visualize how Lumen places something called card to start visualizing the geometry to place or to eliminate the scene. So we can do that by typing r.lumen and visualize and choose card placement and type one. Now, if we look closely over here, we can see that each mesh contain a different way of placing these cards. The one that has separate walls is basically is the most accurate one. If we look at the cache, we can see that all of the walls are visualized and have card placement correctly rather than the, the, the other two. The pink color basically represent point where the lumen cannot eliminate that part. Now it will be eliminated previously in the earliest in the early version. It didn't actually support this type of meshes, but now it does support it. But the problem is the light will not be accurate as the first example that we have created. What we can learn from this is that the simpler our walls are inside our project the better lumen can visualize and analyze these objects and place the cards correctly to get more lighting information inside that mesh so let's go back to our example and see how our example actually run with this option so immediately once we load it with the, the command is still on you can see that car placement varies from one area to another those who have one single mesh have actually different card placement now according to epic games documentation we can actually increase the car placement for these projects if we go to the project details we can see that lumen already have placed 12 cards and we can increase that but this is actually causes sometimes crashes due to memory issues and may not actually also end up with the, the correct setup that we're looking for. The best way to do this is to do it manually. Go back to Blender and separate these walls or simplify it as much as possible so we can give Lumen an easy way to visualize these objects to build up these cards and start eliminating our scene. So I'm going to update the scene with a simpler model that we did earlier. So after updating our model, uh, it seems that we, with more simplified objects and separated walls, pink color have started to be less. And this means that Numen now have more accurate information to light our scene. And we can also visualize the cards after the latest adjustments and we can now start to see the cards are placed around each wall correctly and even with the stairs we have separated the steps and we can see that the cards are also placed on top of them now you will keep doing this until you reach to the optimum level of your scene with no issues whatsoever for to affect lumen uh, lighting system. So now that we understand how Lumen start to analyze and eliminate the scene, we still can see that there are exterior scenes 
have issues that need to be solved. For example, these dark corners or dark areas. As we have mentioned earlier, the closer you get to the object, it should visualize more as Lumen start to analyze these cards and place them and start to eliminate them based on the geometry and also the material. So we can start thinking about increasing the light intensity of that skylight to eliminate the scene more from inside. But the problem is this will affect the exterior part. For example, if we increase this to five, we can start to see some changes happening to the walls and get more brighter. But if you go outside, you can clearly see that this have affected the lighting, the exterior lighting and to our scene. So it is not actually a good solution at the moment. There is, however, another way to solve this by adjusting the material intensity or the color intensity of the materials. What this means is, if you look at the examples that Epic Games have provided, you'll find that most of them have been assigned with white color material. And if you start walking around the, the project, you'll see that it's clearly lit and it has enough light inside and outside. Which means that when the objects start to get materials that is composed of a texture, roughness, and also normal, you'll start to see more darker representation of that object. To solve that, we can actually increase the color intensity of that object. For example, let's go over here and you'll see that I have already added a multiple and a scalar parameter nodes to the texture. So inside our material over here, we can increase the color to see, for example, to three. And we immediately see that it has helped increase the brightness of our scene, which is considered as a very powerful solution to solve any dark areas. Another thing we need also to understand about Lumen is that it uses the material color to eliminate the scene, which means, for example, if we change the color of the floor, you will start to see that color affecting the walls and also the ceiling. For example, let's create a simple material with just a simple color, a very strong color, let's say, for example, a powerful green color. Now this is not an immersive material or anything, we're just, we're just seeing how Lumen can affect the surrounding or the entire scene with the illumination that is happening from this floor, for example. All right. So based on all of these information, we can see now that Lumen represent a really good lighting system with a, an adequate frame per second. We didn't cause our scene to consume lots of memory of our hardware. We didn't even add yet the post-process volume. So inside the post-process volume, after we enable the infinite unbound option, so we can affect the whole scene. And after typing Lumen and activating all of the Lumen options that we have here, we can start to see that we can increase also the quality of our scene. So what we have here is the Lumen scene lighting quality. If we move to our Lumen scene visualization and increase the quality, for example, to 15, we can start to see changes happening to how the pixels are represented on these walls. But it will cost also memory on top of that. We can also see that there's lumen scene details can also affect the quality of the lighting inside our scene. So you can start playing with these values carefully along also with the final gather to improve the quality of the shadows and we will end up having a better representation of the 
our scene of the scene over here from outside and from inside as well now these white splashes that you can see when while the camera is moving and according to how lumen works start to cast rays it's because we are using a single face uh, mesh with double sided or with a, a complete thick wall you will see less of that also as well all right so now that we understand how lumen light our scene it's time to see our second option which is using hardware ray tracing now i'm gonna move to the second floor over here and see how this will actually behave if i enable hardware ray tracing pay attention what's gonna happen here to this part of the wall Once we enable hardware ray tracing, we can clearly see that the light bounces more correctly. And we have, we can see that there is more light, light bounces inside our scene. But the frame per second have dropped a little bit. And this means that hardware ray tracing with lumen enabled give us more accurate lighting and higher detailed shadow and representation of the lighting inside the scene but at the cost of the frame per second now let's add a direction light and see also the difference between them Sorry, if we disable ray tracing shadows, you can start to see the shadows coming through the glass with the lumen enable and also hardware ray tracing enable. So the light, so the direction light, if we adjust it to this part of the, the project, let's get it. So if we adjust direction light let's have a look here at the effect when we disable and enable hardware ray tracing so if we disable it you can start to see the scene gets a little bit darker enable it give us more powerful bounce and to our scene it is very clear when we enable hardware ray tracing with lumen it will give us much better result with without lumen but we should be careful with how much that will cost us with our frame per second especially that we are sending this to a client and we don't know if he have adequate or enough hardware to run the project so even with the reflection we can also use ray tracing and this will help us also to get more accurate reflection from outside and inside especially with the glass i believe this is something still epic working on for lumen hopefully they will also provide a solution for that uh, and their coming releases so i hope you guys find this tutorial helpful for you and if you have any questions please share it down in the comments and thank you very much see you in the next video